there's there's ghosts and there's dresses and there's mud. I, there's I, a cool house. There's a cool house. There's a cool it's, house. It's like a it's it's look it's and he's you, fine. You really oh god. He's just a kitten. He's just a kitten. Oh, we watched Crimson Peak. There. <laughs> I guess I'll get into my... I, you go into your version of the house as a ghost, and I'll go into my version of the house as a ghost. So I'll get into my thing about Silent Hill real quick. <laughs> so the house itself, the machines, the land, it's been there forever. And more importantly, so have Lucille and Thomas. They have been there forever. And yeah, sure, whatever. They were children, and then their moms died. And then they were sent off to boarding school. And then they came back later, and there was a big hole in the roof of their house, and then they did some scams and killed some women it's been centuries it not it has not been a normal human lifespan of this it has been centuries since they've been stuck here they have been stuck here forever once we first enter crimson peak there's like four or five machines and they're all spread out and far away just to show you how many times he's made a machine and how many times it's not worked there's not that many he hasn't done this very much mm -hmm. And then slowly throughout the rest of the movie, the machines get closer to the house and, and grow more. in number yeah. and become more decrepit and broken apart yeah. and failed. And the reason that that doesn't make a lot of sense if you're thinking about the time of it is that on the flip side, we've got Alan, who's being a detective, and it hasn't been that much time mm -hmm. since she's left. Mm -hmm. And because he's like, this is happening so quickly. Her mm -hmm. house is, you know, they're taking out the stuff and all mm -hmm. of that. And he's going to go to England to try and get her or whatever. Mm -hmm. But that, like, isn't that much time. Mm -mm. It's not enough time for what we see at Crimson Peak. Mm -hmm. What we see at Crimson Peak chronologically could not have happened in the same amount of time as what Alan's dealing with over here. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm trying to say. I'm not trying to say that... Oh, they've been stuck here for centuries with the rest of the world moving at the same time. I'm trying to say that Crimson Peak is that Silent Hill purgatory mm -hmm. of time just stopping once you mm -hmm. enter. And things just keep building up and not working. And by the end of the movie, and I mean the literal end of the movie, we see just how long they've actually been here. Because the yard is so full of broken and failed machines that there's almost no walking space mm -hmm. and those aren't new machines that no. just aren't working no they're old old version. broken right. machines they're like entirely yeah. it's not like these are little pieces from the mm -hmm. machine no this is like whole new other things mm -hmm. and the important part to remember about this is thomas as far as we've seen in this movie only works on one machine mm -hmm. and it's the one that works mm -hmm. he shows us a miniature of it and it's the same one he works on the whole movie so where do all these other broken machines come from they're not the failed ones he only works on the same machine all these other machines just show up to show us that they've been here a very long time mm -hmm. and the reason why this is mm -hmm. this place this this crimson peak is a is a you know whatever you want to call it a purgatory or a time anomaly or whatever like not the reason why necessarily but mm -hmm. the meaning behind it like what does that mean mm -hmm. why does it mean that mm -hmm. if we're really thinking about what it is you got to consider what we're talking about here the actuality of it mm -hmm. is this is a, a baronet <laughs> okay what's a baronet so a baronet is part of the aristocracy which is part of a feudal system mm -hmm. In the moment at which Thomas and Lucille are growing up and living, yes, the feudal system is gone. Mm -hmm. We've moved on to capitalism, mm -hmm. and there isn't space for feudal practices anymore. Like previously, he would have, as Edith likes to say, he was like a leech or whatever. Like he was surviving by mm -hmm. taking from everyone else and being like the lord of it all. Mm -hmm. Well, he can't do that anymore because that's not the system anymore. Mm -hmm. And because of that their way of trying to survive mm -hmm. is anachronistic. It's no longer part of the current contemporary moment. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The clothes he wear are from like two eras ago and they're old and they're tattered. Yeah. Like, yeah, no. And their house is, isn't updated. It doesn't have modern, you know, the most modern it's got is that it's got piping inside, but mm -hmm. that's like, it's barely working and needs to be refurbished and everything is stagnant mm -hmm. and stuck. They're literal ghosts. Yeah. And 
throughout the movie, we watch as more and more modern technology, though broken and old, starts suffocating the house mm -hmm. because it's it's obsolete. The mm -hmm. old is obsolete. Well, and his plan, Thomas's plan, right, mm -hmm. is so he can't make money off the feudal system anymore, mm -hmm. right? But he's got to make money because they need money to live. Mm -hmm. And his plan is, well, the only thing he's got left is the literal house mm -hmm. and the land it's sitting on. Mm -hmm. And so he will dig out what he's got mm -hmm. from it to try and sustain himself off mm -hmm. of it, right? That's the whole point of his, of his machines, though, is the, I said that he was digging for his freedom, but you can't dig down for freedom. No. And, like, you're digging a useless hole that gets filled up almost immediately by mud. It doesn't... Well, and the thing is, like, this house, we can assume, is fairly old, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's really old. Been a couple generations. <laughs> it's, it's probably, you know, a, like a, a century or two old. Yeah. Like, it's an old house. Yeah. It's probably not been sinking into the mud this entire time. Uh -uh. That they would have not, they would have abandoned it a long time ago. Mm -hmm. It's sinking recently. Mm -hmm. It's sinking because he's digging. Mm -hmm. It's sinking because he's digging under the house. Yeah. And by digging under the house, the house is sinking. He's going to bury the house. He's digging his own literal grave and financial grave. Yeah. Like, yeah. He's digging graves mm -hmm. for the house because they've never dug graves for any of the people they've killed. They've killed people, by the way. I don't know if we oh, said did that. Did we earlier. get into that? I don't know. Oh, we, we forgot to mention. Yeah. Along with the ghosts, so that she can see that they've uh, the the sharps Lucille. have killed people. No. I'm talking about the fact that they never buried any of those bodies that they no. killed. They killed four people. They threw them in the vats of mud underneath the house. But he's never dug a grave for the people that he's helped killed. He knows it's bad to kill people. You can tell he knows. Oh yeah. He knows it's messed up that they're doing it. Yeah. He does as his mean he stops. He is very slowly making a grave mm -hmm. for everyone. For all of them. For everyone well, in the house. He, he feels guilt and he's still trying to, in a certain way, do what he feels is right. Mm -hmm. It's a self-imploding scenario. Yep. That's his solution yep. to the situation. <laughs> They're ghosts. Yeah. He he literally... So he's, he's, he's digging these graves. This mass grave, really. Because... He's literally and figuratively has not put these people to rest. And so they're, they're walking around. Once the machine that he's built start work, starts working, mm -hmm. and it starts working because he's started making choices for himself. Yeah, it's his heart. It's the, he is the house, they are the house, he is the house. I don't know what you want to say. He is his machine. He is he the is machine. He is the machine. The machine has a heartbeat sound. Mm -hmm. It's his heart has started up, mm -hmm. if you want to go for that metaphor. It's the one that does its job and breaks through into the basement mm -hmm. where all the bodies are hidden mm -hmm. and sh literally shines light in there. Mm -hmm. And it is the thing that helps Blondie survive and live. She, she climbs yeah. out of the basement through the machine yeah. out into the open and that saves her life. He literally, even after he dies, he dies by the way, yeah, yeah. saves her life. That's, mm -hmm. that's agential. Mm -hmm. But once the machine starts working, I will say this, like the machine is, as we've said, it's futile to try and combine it with the aristocracy. So once the machine starts working, mm -hmm. they... Mm -hmm. this brother and sister and the aristocracy in general they're obsolete mm -hmm. they have no role or mm -hmm. purpose anymore mm -hmm. especially once it's starting to take their literal holding their literal land holding mm -hmm. and like selling it and get, getting rid of it in this new capitalist system mm -hmm. they're like feudal classist system there's not there's no reason for it anymore it doesn't need to exist and mm -hmm. so they literally don't need to exist once mm -hmm. it's working the mud it just looks like matter like human Matter. Meat matter. Well, okay, okay, okay. Back to Edith's original point of what does the aristocracy do? What does a baronet do? Mm -hmm. They just leech life from the other people around them and accumulate it through wealth, basically. Mm -hmm. But they accumulate it into one holding. Mm -hmm. That is the actual purpose and goal of this feudal classist system. Mm -hmm. You know, this is like a manifestation of it. The blood that we're sitting on is centuries mm -hmm. of people mm -hmm. who've given up their lives for this, just a couple people to mm -hmm. have the role that they have on the top of this hill. Mm -hmm. At the end of the film, at the very last minute, the town shows up, woohoo, they've got like torches or something and they're coming and, they're, mm -hmm. and they've shown up. And mm -hmm. they've shown up only, and you said this and it is true, they've only shown up finally because the siblings are dead. The yes. line is gone. Yes, they can. you can finally enter Crimson Peak at the end of the movie because mm -hmm. it's done, it's gone. Well, the, the aristocratic line is ended, right? 
the line that was separating itself from all of these townsfolk who mm-hmm. would have been originally the people that it was sucking the lifeblood out of, mm-hmm. they're gone, mm-hmm. which means this is now just back to being like communal property for everyone. Mm-hmm. Right. Of course, she owns it and she gets to be a widow. And now she's I don't know what a female baronet is, but she's whatever she is. But whatever. I don't think she stays there anyway. She wouldn't she, stay there. She wouldn't stay there. Are you <laughs> kidding me? I don't think anyone would stay there. She'd um, be like, there's some bodies in the basement. Yeah, right. There's a body in the attic. There's a body in the front yard. <laughs> <laughs> she should go check it out. She should go check it out. Or burn it all down. One of those two. I don't care. You can even burn my nice dresses in there. I Although, don't want them. No, no. Blondie. <laughs> Blondie doesn't actually release the ghosts that's not the point this is just a story with ghosts in it this isn't a ghost story it's not a ghost story that's why she doesn't fulfill Mm -hmm. any of the ghosts Mm -hmm. uh, like needs or wants or Mm -hmm. anything like those ghosts are probably still there when she leaves they are we see them we see one yeah yeah but i mean like they're they're not they're like yes you avenged me or like they don't have Mm -mm. that reprieve Mm -mm. it's not a part of this film so Mm -mm. that's not the point Mm because it's not a ghost story Mm -hmm. anyway it what it is is it's a story about a social scenario that's really messed up yeah that's what it is and that's the point that i was trying to get at before which is like this interaction between the aristocracy and everyone else is not like a healthy thing in that the feudal system required them not only to like you know take the literal lifeblood from people but also in doing so it forced those who were in the aristocracy to hold themselves separate Mm -hmm. from everyone else not to interact socially and this separation this lack of, of ability to interact or, or feeling like you can interact mm-hmm. is what creates the perversion of the scenario that we're in. Mm-hmm. Because the feudal system itself, in its class separation, was perverse. Mm-hmm. That's the social messaging here. Yes. We are not going to bring Freud into this conversation. We refuse. But the sister's trauma, in a very general sense, mm-hmm. is just the trauma of having been part of the aristocracy. Mm-hmm. That's just part of why she's so messed up like there's many other parts i'm sure but Mm -hmm. to an extent part of what's wrong with her is that she was part of this class where she couldn't ask for her neighbor's help because her parents were evil or awful people or whatever because there were no neighbors to be had Mm -hmm. she's separate and Mm -hmm. isolated that's where this trauma sort of lies like at a sort of foundational place she's replicating a trauma because it's a it's a larger social trauma that she's replicating at an individual level yes did you hear that I thought it was from them, but I think actually it was outside. No, it's him. He's snoring. Okay. It just sounded... Yeah, that's it. That's it. It's a cat snoring. I was like, who is that person yelling outside? It's a cat snoring. snoring. It is both all of the things, like, it is both the purgatory Mm -hmm. and it is the social isolation of the aristocracy. Like, both things are being, Mm -hmm. like, presented to us in this film. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's, I'm not, oh, no, folks, like, if you haven't figured it out, out, yeah, I feel like I'm talking to my students now. If you haven't figured this out yet, all options are viable options for interpreting a film. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Both the director's and yours and mine Mm -hmm. and every other million interpretation out there Mm -hmm. is perfectly acceptable if you can find a way to argue it. Mm -hmm. And I thought I was thinking about this last night, Mm -hmm. is the fact that the whole movie is her book. Mm, I think it's a really good point. So, (laughs) it's a story. The whole movie is her story, right? Mm -hmm. We see at the end that it's it's the book closing. Mm -hmm. Do we see the book open at the beginning of the movie? Yeah. Yeah. We don't see her name at the bottom, right? Because that's the reveal. That's the reveal. It's a fun little reveal. Just a little extra. Just yeah. a little extra for you. But yeah, it's a <laughs> it's a story. It's like a Disney classic, folks. <laughs> I know, right? Like weird, <laughs> weird way to introduce us to this. I don't think that's what we open with. We open, we with, open her with her on the field, right? Mm-hmm, Saying mm-hmm, the thing like mm-hmm. ghosts are real or whatever. Mm-hmm. But everything we see is is the story. I don't think any of it's, I think it's all the story. I don't think any of it actually happened. Oh no, I don't think any of it actually happened. Yeah. That was what I was trying to get to. I think I think that she did the thing where she wrote herself into a story. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And certain parts of it, like her going to like the publisher and them going like, ah, like that really probably is based on something that she experienced. Mm-hmm. But like she just took it from there mm-hmm. and ran. Yeah. That's just what I wanted to say. Was that sort of my no, last thing I, I wanted to bring up? I think, and I think it actually ties in really nice with the comment of earlier where she has to retype the manuscript and mm-hmm. sort of like change herself mm-hmm. for the world. Mm-hmm. I feel like my brain's like, I could see how that is the actual thing that mm-hmm. made her think of what else would make me change mm-hmm. and have to like force me to, do you know what I mean? Like yeah. that's the jumping off point for this story. Mm-hmm. She's literally in the middle of it when the baronet shows up. Mm-hmm. So in my mind, like, I don't know that any of this takes place or not, but listen now, this story, it, she literally goes to go publish it 
Mm -hmm. And then the publisher says, you should add a love story. And then who magically walks in? I know. Because she has to add a love story now. Mm -hmm. And he's like, oh, I like that love story. I'm like, of course you do. Because you are that story. You are the love story. You are the love story. You're the part, you're the part of the story she had to add in. Mm -hmm. It's, the whole thing is her book. And that's kind of fun. We don't see a single thing outside of the book, besides the book actually closing. Yeah. Everything we see is inside the book. Mm -hmm. And you don't see that a lot. No. You'll see like the person going, well, here's my story. And then they'll, and then the book will close. And then they'll have right. like a bookend, like, da -na 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 -na, happy like ending mm -hmm. music. And they're like showing and like, and this is me sitting on a dock with my book, you know? Right, right, right. No, 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 no. The whole thing is, is of itself. But I do think your point that like he shows up right when it's requirement within the thing is like such mm -hmm. a good, like, mm -hmm. it's, it's one of those moments where it's like, it both does not ever happen mm -hmm. and both is happening like mm -hmm. she really is an author mm -hmm. who's like trying to publish a thing mm -hmm. and then inv invents for herself this person who then actually shows up for her like it is because it is a movie you mm -hmm. know it, like it's still a story at the end mm -hmm. but like only after she goes oh yeah sherlock holmes does she start to add in the a figure mystery. of, a, of mis a mystery right mm -hmm. like only once these things are occurring to her does she start to put them in yeah Prior to the guy saying you need to find a love story, she says to someone, well, I'd like to be a widow. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what she gets for herself out mm -hmm. of it. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's, yeah. you could just see how the strings attach mm -hmm. to, like, the thought of, like, what comes next, what comes next, and, like, mm -hmm. how it builds itself because of the suggestions given to her. Mm -hmm. It is an interesting... She writes... Storytelling. She writes her story. It's an interesting storytelling. And we see her structure. write it on screen. Yeah. We literally... She literally says... Well, this is what will happen. And then that happens mm -hmm. because it's her writing the story. Mm -hmm. That's fun. In a certain way, then the entire thing is very, she has a lot of freedom and agency then. Like mm -hmm. she's completely in control in a certain way. Mm -hmm. Yes. Everything that happens, she designed, which is so Guillermo del Toro. So, I can't even even. So, you know. <laughs> it's so him. It is so him. <laughs> no, it is so him. We gave enough examples mm -hmm. of the things, like all the things that she basically, mm -hmm. they are the next point that comes into the being. Mm -hmm. She sort of like wills them into being. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. He's never shy to say this, but like it's the house of Usher, but like it, we don't see it go into the ground fully. Mm -hmm. Like there's, it's all the things are all the things mm -hmm. of playing with all the gothic tropes at the same time, mm -hmm. inverting them and saying, but what if instead it mm -hmm. was, you know. There's so many other pieces to be played with in this. We could talk about this movie for hours. Like the, We could get into the Uncanny Valley and why is Thomas making automatons upstairs? <laughs> Little mechanical figures that look human but don't look human and creep you out. Like we mm -hmm. could get into that. Mm -hmm. We could get into like... I want to keep talking about the movie is the sad I know, part. I'm really having troubles with it too. I want to keep talking. Because I, like we didn't, I feel like we didn't even talk about the actual movie. It's you know what so I mean? good. It's such a good movie. It's, I feel like we Sorry. also, it's okay. I feel like we didn't get into like, you know, like all of the things, like the joke, like don't get into that. Don't get into that elevator thing. Like that's going to break on you immediately. I like that the ghost is like getting in there and just going for a ride. Where are you going, ghost? What you doing? You just going for a ride now? It's literally, like been fun. literally Thomas says, oh, the elevator goes up and down by itself. Sometimes it's like it has a mind of its own. Oh my gosh. House is alive, but it's dead, but it's alive. Oh gosh. What I'm a so metaphor. Worried. Everything's a metaphor. The ghosts are a metaphor. Did you know the ghosts are a metaphor? The ghosts are a metaphor. We didn't get any of the imagery stuff, like the butterflies oh, versus and the, the moths. moths. I know. Literally, oh. I even said at some point, I was like, she's the yellow. What is that butterfly called? I don't know. What is the yellow you butterfly look, called? You look that up while I think about more things that we didn't talk about. That scene in the tub. Oof, the scene in the tub. And then, like, the little the little papillon that she's throwing the ball for. And then it, and then you were telling me that the ball gets thrown back because it's a, an homage to a very famous bloop, bloop, bloop. It's literally just a tiger butterfly. Fantastic. <laughs> the tiger butterfly. She's a butterfly. And she's the other the, one's the moth with the skull on it. Yeah, she's the deadly moth. She's the tiger butterfly. He's the the blue butterfly. I f don't know the name it of the like blue one. It has like a million pins at the end. Because it, it's it's the first thing she she taxidermies. Yeah. And it's stuck full of so many pins. We don't see it for the entire movie no. until the one point at the end of the movie where Thomas is like, we could leave. And then we see him there as a butterfly to represent that he could be as free as Blondie is because she's also a butterfly. Yeah. But unlike Blondie's butterflies who we've seen, though mostly being sick or dying, his butterfly is already dead and has been dead for a very long time. Yeah. That's sort of the point of it. Yeah. No, I mean, and you know, like 
the fact that she cuts off a chrysalis mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and is like, I like it when it's not quite a butterfly yet. And you're like, ooh, that ooh, girl, you're so gross. Please, with the, mm. Dude, she's so gross. I know she's so gross. She's we, didn't so get, gross. we didn't even get it. We didn't even say it. Look, I, this, I, I resisted it because I resist the, the monstrous feminine thing where it's like the woman's a monster when they have the agency because then the agency is the thing where it's something that's creepy about them that has to do with their sexual qualities. Like, why must we? We don't have to. She's not even just doing the thing where she's like, I'm killing because I must. Mm -hmm. She's doing the thing where she's like, kills and takes a trophy. Like, mm -hmm. she's not, she's all bad. Mm -hmm. Which I resist. Mm -hmm. Because I want to find the human in her. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. this is why I didn't want to... The, the dad very much. Oh, I remember the other inconsistency that we were just like, we can't hold our disbelief for that. Okay. So when she snuck into the men's club, Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I remember. How, how unlikely would that be? She's she's pretending to be her brother, but I'm sorry. No, Have but, you seen how but, tall Tom Hiddleston no, is? He's no, really tall. It, no, you don't. You have to get invited to these clubs. You I can't know. just walk in there, even if you are of the correct gender to be there. I know. You can't just, just stroll right in and stroll right out and know to be like, did you see that person we've never seen before at the club? And I get it. She's strong. I get it. I, I'm just, I'm. I'm disbelieving of her killing this old man because, A, he's not... So old. He's not so old. He's got a good grip on the sink he's <laughs> kneeling in front of. He's in a kneeling position, which is actually a pretty hard position to, like, knock somebody out of. Yeah. And I'm not saying women aren't strong. Women can be so physically strong, it's scary. I'm just saying... This doesn't seem as... This doesn't seem like she could do this. <laughs> It's just in the way that it's presented to us, mm -hmm. if it was a different pose he was in, if mm -hmm. he was slipping, if mm -hmm. there was some other contributing factor, mm -hmm. I'd go for it. Mm -hmm. It's just a little hard the way it is. Like we did an analysis, which was great, but then like a part of me just wants to like recap the movie because the movie's so fun. The movie's so much fun and I just want to keep talking about it, but we really can't. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> just to watch you clap. Hi. <laughs> we did it. Okay. Okay. So... That was Crimson Peak. 2015. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Um, but she killed some people in this, and they did that because that was how they were going to get the money to try and make this machine happen. Yeah, they were Black Widow. They had a Black Widow scheme going on. Yeah, basically. Anyway, but that's not important. That's not what I'm talking about. No, and she's not like a murderer where I'm like, maybe I could understand that if I was like... No, she's... Yeah. She's just a murderer? You want to watch a good spooky movie for the month of Halloween because it's a month long? How dare you insist that it's only a day? You should watch Crimson Peak. It's pretty dang spooky. Mm -hmm. It's not super spooky, but it's got enough spook to it. Mm -hmm. It's a good spooky movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm.